Hi, George Diamond here again. This is the uh, next video in our flipped classroom unit. Now, uh, in this particular series of videos, we've been looking at uh, evaluating limits analytically. Now, I said with, uh, when you're evaluating a limit analytically, you always try direct substitution first. Uh, now, if direct substitution doesn't work, then there's usually two instances or two things that'll happen. When you use direct substitution, if you end up with zero over zero, now, remember, division by zero is not defined. Typically, this indicates a hole in your graph. All right? Now, holes we can get rid of. Right? We can remove them by factoring and canceling. So we can cancel them out. Now, if you end up with some number over zero, all right? so zero on the denominator, this would indicate an asymptote. So this would indicate an asymptote. Now, an asymptote you're not going to get rid of. If there's a vertical asymptote, there's simply no limit. But zero over zero, then we're going to look at some problems now that we're going to try direct substitution. Direct substitution won't work. And with each of these, we'll end up with zero over zero, indicating a hole in our graph. And I'm going to show you what to do uh, if you have a hole. Right? Now, you've got to be able to factor. Right? I call this the factor and cancel technique. Because the hole, can be, the hole can be removed, and to remove it, you have to, you have to factor it. That's what we're going to look at here. Let's take a look at example number one. And we're going to, now first of all, trying direct substitution. Now, trying direct substitution. Uh, substituting one in for x gives you one cubed minus one over one minus one. Now, one cubed minus one gives you zero. One minus one gives you zero. That indicates that this particular problem, we have a hole. Now, let's take a look at, let me show you what we're going to do with the hole. Or how to remove it. Now, to remove the hole, we have to factor our, our, our function here, our expression. So we got x cubed minus 1 over x minus 1. So I'm going to go to factor. Now, first of all, x minus 1 won't factor. There's no common factor. It's just a binomial. So that's not going to factor. But x cubed minus 1 will factor again. Now, in the previous video, we reviewed how to factor a difference of two cubes. This is what we have here. Now, a difference of two cubes will factor as a binomial times a trinomial. Uh, so, the, so this is a subtraction. This is a difference. So looking at your two bases, the two bases are x and 1. So the binomial factor is going to be x minus 1. Now to get the trinomial, remember the first term of your trinomial is your first base squared. So the first base is x. This will be x squared. Plus, this is subtraction, so the middle term on your trinomial will be plus. Now, to get the middle term, you've got to multiply the two bases. 1 times x gives you 1x, or just x. And then to get the last term of your trinomial is the second base squared. 1 squared gives you 1. So that's, that factors the, uh, the numerator now. Now, the presence of a whole uh, indicates that we should end up with the same factor in the numerator that we have in the denominator. So if you notice, we've got x, plus x, x minus 1 in our numerator x minus 1 in the denominator. So that, and that's our hole. So to get rid of the hole, we've got to cancel these out. Now, the hole is gone. Right, so that removes the hole. Now, what's left, we're going to use direct substitution with them. So let's take the 1, plug it in for x in the remaining expression, and let's see, this will give us 1 squared plus 1 plus 1, or 3. So the limit as x approaches 1 of x cubed minus 1 over x minus 1 is 3. Uh, once again, you have to remove the hole before that will work. Okay, we're going to try several more examples. Let's go to the next one. Right, let's try this one here. Now, this time we're looking at the limit as x approaches negative 3 of x squared plus x minus 6 over x plus 3. Now, once again, let's try direct substitution. All right, so drawing direct substitution gives us negative 3 squared plus negative 3 minus 6 over negative 3 plus 3. Well, that gives us 0 on the bottom. Okay, this will give us 9 minus 9, which is 0. 0 over 0 indicates the presence of a hole. Right, now, once again, you want to try direct substitution first yeah, because it, you know, sometimes it, it will work. But it doesn't work with this problem here. So all the ones that we're going to look at on the next uh, next few examples, okay, these are all going to have holes in them. Right? And we may not try the direct substitution, but we're going to see how to remove the hole. 
So to get started, let's see if we can factor the numerator and the denominator. Now first, x plus 3 won't factor. Let's just bring that down. x squared plus x minus 6, that's a trinomial. Okay, this should factor as two binomial factors. So let's start off with the x squared. We'll factor as x times x. Okay, let's get our signs. Now the 6 is, is negative, so that means the signs have to be opposite signs, 1 plus, 1 minus. Now the middle term is a 1x, so let's look at some factors of 6. Now 6 has factors of 1 times 6 and 2 times 3. And we're, since, uh, since it's a negative 6, one of, the, one of the factors has to be negative, one of the factors has to be positive. And remember, the middle term tells you the sign of the bigger number. So the 3 has to be plus, and the 2 is going to be minus. So let's put the 2 here, and let's put the 3 here, and that gets it factored. Now, once you get a factor down, look for the whole. You should have the same factor in the numerator that you have in the denominator. So you can see the x plus 3 on top, x plus 3 in the bottom. Cancel them out. That's the whole. So the whole's gone. Now, I said we're going to take what's left and let's substitute negative 3 in for x and the x minus 2. So once the whole is gone, then we go ahead and use direct substitution. So this would be negative 3 minus 2 or negative 5. So the limit as x approaches negative 3 of this function is negative 5. Now we'll try several more examples. Okay, let's try the next one. Alright, let's try the next problem. Now this time we're going to do the limit as x approaches 2 of 2 minus x over x squared minus 4. Now, first of all, if you try direct substitution, it gives us 2 minus 2, 2 minus 2 in the numerator. 2 squared minus 4 in the denominator, which gives us 0 over 0. Once again, we've got a hole in our, uh, in our, in our graph. So that indicates the presence of a hole. So, uh, now first of all, 2 minus x won't factor yet. Now the x squared minus 4 will factor as, and that's a difference of 2 squares, so it'll factor as x plus 2 times x minus 2. Now, if you notice the, uh, the binomial in the numerator and the denominator. You have 2 minus x and x minus 2. Now those are simply opposite binomials. Uh, so uh, let's factor a negative off the numerator here. That'll give us negative 1 times. So let's factor a negative 1 off and that'll make the x positive and the 2 negative. So it'll be negative 1 times x minus 2 over x plus 2 times x minus 2. And then you can see the x minus 2's will cancel. Now what's left is negative 1 over x plus 2. Okay, now once you factor the whole out, you've factored it and canceled it, the whole is gone. Now let's take the 2, substitute it in for x. And this will give us negative 1 over 2 plus 2, or negative 1 fourth. So we say the limit as x approaches 2 is going to be negative 1 fourth. All right, so once again, now to be able to evaluate this type of limit, now you've got to be able to factor. So let's try, uh, let's try example number four. Right, here goes. Now this time let's take the limit as x approaches 2 of x cubed minus 4x over x minus 2. Right, now so we're going to put this in factored form first. Now first of all, x minus 2 won't factor. Now looking at the numerator though, we have... Uh, uh, x cubed minus 4x. Now, first thing I've noticed, you've got an x in both terms. So, the numerator has a common factor of x. So you've got x cubed and x. Anytime you have a common variable factor, we can factor the one with the smallest exponent off. So, we're going to take an x off of each term in the numerator. Now, you've got three x's. You factor one x off, that gives us x squared minus. Factor the x off there, it gives us 4. All right, now we got x times the quantity x squared minus 4 now. Now you should recognize x squared minus 4 is a difference of two squares. It'll factor again. So let's factor, let's factor it as a difference of squares. Now it's going to be x times uh, x squared minus 4 will factor as x plus 2 times x minus 2. All that divided by x minus 2. Now that gets the, uh, that gets the expression factored completely. Now you can see x minus 2 in top and bottom. Okay, let's cancel those out. That's the whole. So we've removed the whole. Let's take 2 and substitute it in for uh, x and what's left. So it'll be 2 times 2 plus 2. It'll be 2 times 4 gives us 8. So the limit as x approaches 2 of x cubed minus 4x over x minus 2 is 8. And 
and uh, you can evaluate that very easily once you factor the whole out. Okay, let's try example number five. Okay, number five. Now this time we're going to take the limit as x approaches zero. Uh, uh, of x cubed plus 9x over x. So to get us started, now if, uh, the x in the denominator is not going to cancel, or it's not going to factor, we'll just bring it down. Now x cubed minus 9x, now right away you should recognize you have a common factor of x. Let's factor the x off. Now factoring x off the x cubed gives us x squared plus Factoring x off the 9 gives us, off the 9x gives us 9 remaining inside our parentheses. Now you notice you've got x, uh, x in the denominator, x in the numerator, so you got the x on the outside of your parentheses is going to cancel out with the x on the bottom of your, your fraction. That's our whole. So by factoring and canceling, the whole is gone. Now let's substitute 0 in for x into our remaining expression now. I get a 0 squared plus 9, which is 9. So the limit as x approaches 0 should be 9. All right, now you've got to recognize that uh, common factor there, factor it off, and then the x's will cancel out. Okay, let's try example number 6. Now, let's uh, take a look at this. Now this time with this particular expression, we're factoring the limit as x approaches 4. Of x squared minus 5x plus 4, x squared minus 2x minus 8. So two trinomials here. So let's uh, take a look at factoring. We're going to factor both of these, looks like. All right, so let's do, uh, let's do the numerator first. Now, you always want to check for the greatest common factor, and x squared minus 5x plus 4 does not have a common factor. So let's go ahead and issue factors to binomials. x squared will factor as x and x. Okay, let's do the signs next. Now, to get your signs, I said you always look at the third term of your trinomial. Okay, that's a plus 4. Plus 4 tells us the signs have to be the same. Either both plus or both minus. Now to tell which, you've got to look at the middle term. The middle term of the trinomial is a minus 5x, so the signs on both binomials will be minus. Now let's look at some factors of 4. 4 has factors of 1 times 4 and 2 times 2. Now we're looking for two factors that if they're both negative, they should add up to give me negative. And you can see immediately 1 and 4, if they're both negative, they're going to add up to give us negative 5. So if the 1 is negative and the 4 is negative, when you add them up, that gives us 5. So let's put the 1 here and the 4 there. And that's going to factor the numerator. Now, let's factor the denominator. Now, x squared minus 2x minus 8, this will factor as two binomials again. There is no common factor, but you always want to check for a common factor first. So no common factor. The x squared will factor as x and x. Now, let's do the signs next. That's a minus 8 for the third term, so the signs have to be opposite signs. So 1 plus and 1 minus. Now, uh, remember now the middle term is going to tell us the sign of the largest number. So let's look at some factors of 8. 8 has factors of 1 times 8 and 2 times 4. We're looking for two factors. If you subtract them, you should get 2, and that'll be the 2 and the 4. Now, since it's a, a negative 2 for the middle term, remember that tells us the sign of the larger number. So the 4 will be negative. The two positives and put the two here and the four there. Okay, that gets the denominator factor now. Like so, you have to be able to factor uh, using the chart method now to factor this type of trinomial. Now, you notice the x minus four is in the numerator and the denominator, right? Okay, just cancel those out. That gets rid of the whole. Now, let's take four and substitute in for x into uh, our numerator and, our, and the denominator here. So, it'll be four minus one over four plus two. That gives us three over six or one half. So the limit as x approaches 4 on this particular function should be 1 half. Uh, we have two more examples. Let's try the next one. Okay, I'm sorry, we only have one more example. This will be our last one with this particular video. Okay, I'll save this one for last because this one has, uh, uh, we, uh, has a radical in it. All right? So this is a little, would be a little difficult for a lot of students. Now we're looking for the limit as x approaches 16. Now notice now if you try direct substitution, that'll give us 4 minus the square root of 16 over 16 minus 16. That gives you 0 in the, in the bottom. The square root of 16 is 4. 4 minus 4 gives you 0. So if you try direct substitution first, we've got a hole. So we're going to, that indicates, uh, uh, so that indicates a hole. We, can, we should be able to factor and cancel the hole. So let's see if we can factor the hole out. 
Now, you see the x minus square root of, uh, square root of x. Now, in order to factor this, I need a, a radical expression in the denominator. And at first glance, it doesn't, it doesn't appear as though either one of these will factor again, but they will. Right? Because, you see the x minus 16? We, we looked at this in our previous video when we were reviewing factoring. We said any binomial that's a subtraction can be rewritten as a difference of two squares. Okay, that's what we're going to do with the x minus 16. Now, the 16 is already a perfect square. The square root of 16 is 4, so the 16 is okay. Okay, we can write that as 4 squared. Now, the x, we're going to rewrite this. Now, to factor this, we're going to do it, uh, let's rewrite the x minus 16 as a difference of two squares. Now, to do the x, remember how we did this in the last video? That'd be the square root of x squared. That makes a square term out of it. Now, it's still x, but we're writing it as a square term. Now, 16 would be 4 squared. Now, let's bring the numerator down. We can't factor that one as of now. Now, the factor x squared minus 4 squared, we're going to factor this as so be 4 minus the square root of x over. And x squared minus 4 squared will factor as the square root of x plus 4. Square root of x minus 4. Okay. And also, you'll notice here now the uh, 4 minus 4 minus the square root of x. Now, this is a uh, uh, these two binomials here are opposite binomials. So what we're going to have to do, what we're going to, have to do next is factor a negative off the 4 minus the square root of x. Now, factoring a negative off will make the, the square root of x a positive uh, square root of x, and it'll make the 4 minus. So that's what we're going to have to do next. I'm going to, have to erase this here, and we'll factor a negative off the numerator. And then we should be able to evaluate it from there. So it'll be negative 1 times. And that'll make the negative square root of x a positive square root of x, and then a minus 4. So factoring that negative off, and you can see the whole is there. Now, let's take the 16, substitute it in for x now. This will give us negative 1 over the square root of 16 plus 4, which will evaluate to negative 1. Now, the square root of 16 is 4. 4 plus 4 gives us 8. So the limit as this x approaches 16 should be uh, now, once again, I said at first glance, this does not appear that this uh, particular uh, function will factor again, but, but it does. But uh, you have to use, uh, you've got to factor the x minus 16 over the set of real numbers by making a difference of two squares out of it, like we did here, the square root of x squared minus 4 squared. And then that'll factor the square root of x plus 4, the square root of x minus 4. And then factoring the negative off the numerator, you've got the same binomial on top and the bottom, and, uh, and then they'll cancel out. So this is what we do. If, you, if direct substitution uh, doesn't work, if you get 0 over 0 when you use direct substitution, that, that indicates the presence of a whole. Right? So, uh, so you've got to be able to factor, factor and cancel the whole out to get rid of it. And uh, if you need any more help with this type of problem, you can see me, see me during class.